Thank you for John. Oh, you guys are too kind. All right. So I'm going to cover three areas in the sneak peek of Snow Leopard, and we're going to start with Dock and the Finder. Now, one feature of the Dock is Stacks. Stacks makes it really easy to get quickly at your documents and your downloads uh, without cluttering your desktop. And in Snow Leopard, Stacks handle large contents better than ever. I can now scroll through a large stack, and if I have subfolders like this vacation folder, I can just drill right in without leaving Stacks. Yeah, pretty nice. Now, I could open this document right here, but I want to jump into the Finder to show you a couple nice touches there. So here we are in Icon View. Looks pretty familiar, but if you look in the lower right, you'll see that we have a magnification control. I can now magnify my thumbnails, and this is a live preview, so I can actually step through this page PDF right on its icon. I can even play a movie right in its thumbnail, and I can magnify, of course, while it's playing. Really, really cool. Oh, yeah. But you know, my favorite new feature in the doc is Doc Expose. And to demonstrate, I want to recreate a little bit what my desktop can tend to look like after a long day. Lots of mail compose windows, lots of Safari windows, lots of images open in preview and so forth. Now, fortunately, the Mac has long had a fabulous solution for this problem in the area of Expose. So I can activate Expose and step back and see all my windows across all my open applications. But you know, I usually know what application has the window I'm looking for, and now with Doc Expose, getting at it couldn't be more natural. So let's say I want to get at a window inside a preview. I just click and hold, and there are my preview windows. I want to see in Safari, click and hold, and I'm there. Mail, same thing. And you know, I have, it looks like I have an unread me email message I'd like to take a look at. I don't even have to open it, I'll just zoom in and take a quick look. I can zoom in right in Expose without switching apps, and when I want to finally bring a window to the foreground, I click and it slides right in. But you know, Doc uh, Expose also makes it easier than ever to move content across windows, even if some of the windows aren't visible. So let's say I want to go back to that Finder window and get a video to drop, uh, drop inside this email message. I can just Doc Expose into the Finder, find the image I'm looking for, drag it over to Mail. Mail springs into Expose. I select the window I'm looking for and drop it right in. Yeah. This really smooths out some of your Mac workflows. Very nice. OK. The next big area I want to cover is Safari 4. Snow Leopard ships with the final version of Safari 4. And if you're a Safari user, and I hope you are, like me, it is the fastest browser on any platform. You know, if we want to visit an image-rich site like ESPN, we hit it, boom, stunning speed. And that speed extends to JavaScript sites as well. Let's go to Google Maps. Loads quickly, and whether it is zooming, panning, switching modes, just stunning, stunning speed with that Nitro JavaScript engine. But you know, Safari also makes it faster and easier than ever to track my top sites, the sites that I visit most. I click on the top sites icon here, and I get an intelligently laid out, beautiful panoramic view of all the sites I visit most. Getting to one of them couldn't be more natural. I want to go visit ESPN. I click, it fades in, and I'm viewing. I want to go back, it fades right back out. And top sites is even tracking for me when a site that I view has changes since I've last been there with this little blue star. The final really great area of Safari I'd like to cover is full history search. So if I want to go back and find a site that I uh, visited recently, I just click in the search history filter in the lower uh, right, and I get a cover flow view across my browsing history. Right, very easy to find what I'm looking for. But not just that, I have full spotlight search of this content, and not just of the URLs or of the window titles, but of the text in the pages. So I type Maui, not K Maui, let's type Maui, and I get all the pages that I've been using, visiting to plan my Maui vacation. Find the one I want, click, and I'm browsing. Very easy way to get through my history. 
Now, the final area I want to cover is QuickTime 10. QuickTime 10 has been re-engineered on top of modern Snow Leopard foundations, and the QuickTime player has been rebuilt from the ground up to put your video center stage. Let's take a look now at a family vacation video. We see the playback controls are elegantly overlaid on the video itself, and as I start playing, if I move my mouse out of the window, watch how they fade away. Even the window title bar fades away to put my video center stage. And when I want to go back to access those controls, they fade right back in. But another great feature of the QuickTime Player now is the ability to trim and share my video. So I can go here and select Trim. I get a visual timeline of my video. I can scrub smoothly to find the clip I'm looking for, maybe this harrowing cliff jump. Let's go whoop, back up, find the end point, scrub in this way. And when I found what I want, I just click Trim, and there's my edited clip. And then when I want to share it, my sharing options are just a click away. I can share to YouTube, Mobile Me, or iTunes, where I could export to playback on my iPhone. Really, really nice sharing in QuickTime. Thank you. So those are just a few of the many, many touches to uh, Snow Leopard, and I'll, uh, I'll be back shortly. Thank you. Thanks, Craig. So lots of refinements in Snow Leopard, but there's also powerful new technologies. And those technologies fundamentally are to take advantage of the power of silicon and bring that to the user experience. Because when you look at a modern Macintosh, you have an incredible set of components, things that were unthinkable a few years ago. You have RAM, gigabytes of RAM. I mean, a few years ago it was expressed in megabytes. You have a powerful processor that runs at a frequency expressed in gigahertz, that's multi-core, 64-bit capable. And then you have a GPU with enormous raw processing power. But to take advantage of all this, you need the right software. So we have a number of technologies. I want to mention three. First, 64-bit. Of course, the primary reason to use 64-bit is to take advantage of lots of memory. Because if your application runs in 32-bit mode, it has an inherent limit with the addressing space at four gigabytes. When you run in 64-bit, it's 16 billion gigabytes. That's the limit of your addressing space. In practice, it's unlimited. Another reason, of course, to run 64-bit is that the processor can do math faster. So certain things like FFTs will run twice as fast in 64-bit mode. So for all those reasons, we've been on a trajectory over the last few releases to enable more and more 64-bit. And Snow Leopard is a final stage where we are running all the major system applications in 64-bit mode. So. That's 64-bit. Now let's talk about multi-core. Because Moore's law has changed its form. You know, a few years ago, we were used to always increasing kind of frequency for the chips. And as the processors hit around three gigahertz or something like that, the expression of Moore's law became there's more and more cores. And this is a trend that we see continuing in the future. But the challenge with multi-cores is how to take advantage of them, how to program them. And the standard answer is threads, multi-threaded programming. But it's really, really hard. And it's also fairly inefficient because you never have quite the right granularity. So we 